Hello environmental scientists, this is Mr. S and today we're going over 5.5 irrigation, which is really important because it makes up 70% of all fresh water use. So 70% of all the water in the world is um, going to irrigation. So you can see that agriculture in this graph says 68% of all rivers, lakes, and groundwater is going to that. Um, so it's a huge, huge topic to think about. All right, so here are our learning objectives. Um, it sounds like a lot, um, but really uh, it's not so much. Um, main things are to describe the different methods of irrigation and describe the benefits and drawbacks of different methods of irrigation. And um, you can pause the video and read these if you'd like. All right, so irrigation increases productivity of the landscape by 16% um, and it produces 40% of the world's food. So that's why um, we're really going to think about it today. And oops, skip one. Water logging is when roots cannot get enough oxygen. So if you you can think about what we learned about soil types. So if you had a um, really clay soil and it got compacted, um, you might have an issue with the water not draining adequately. And obviously in this Rio Grande Valley um, in New Mexico, um, the 19 Pueblos have a long and deep history of agriculture, and so do many other tribes. Um, but focusing on the Puebloan side, since we're in Tiwa country, um, water um, was really important um, in ancestral Pueblo farming. And there's a lot of different techniques that they used. So they used pumice. If any of you seen that, it's that super light aerated rock full of gas um, that's volcanic. And it was used as a sponge to absorb water and release it slowly over time and used as a mulch to preserve moisture in the soil. Um, there was also terracing, so building up a hillside, checking dams that slowed water, moving across slopes, and then waffle or grid gardens. So that's what you see here on the right. Um, this is a um, famous at Zuni, um, and you can see why it would work. Each little plant, um, the water gets stored and gets fall, um, drains through. Um, seeds are planted in the cavity. Um, the selection of plants is also important. So corn is sun tolerant and grows tall. Beans and squash are less tolerant, but they grow shorter and can be shaded by the corn plants. So that's another reason why um, the three sisters are the ancient crop of North America and they, they help each other conserve water and keep the ground shaded as well. All right, so the efficiency is the percent of water that reaches the plant roots and it's not lost to um, evaporation or runoff. So I recommend doing some handwritten notes as we go along just to review. So the first one is furrow irrigation. And this is when trenches, trenches are built and filled with water just constantly. Um, and so the efficiency is 65%. It uh, doesn't take a lot of effort and it's really cheap, but there's a lot of water logging and salinization, which we're going to talk more about. We've talked some about salinization and I mentioned water logging before. It's kind of obvious. So those are the issues with that type of irrigation. And obviously we wouldn't do that here in New Mexico. Um, flood irrigation is similar, except you do it periodically, so only certain times, and it's um, more efficient. Um, the last one is when they leave water out um, constantly, so they would only do this for things like cranberries or certain crops that grow con in constant water. But flood irrigation is pretty common, and as you know in New Mexico, that's how our fields are irrigated with the acequias. They just open the acequias and it floods the field. Um, it's easy and cheap, um, and it's you know it doesn't involve a lot of labor to set up, um, but it does cause water logging and salinization, and we'll, we'll see that in New Mexico that's a big problem. Then you have spray irrigation. You've probably all seen this. Um, it's pumped through nozzles or sprinklers, and 75 to 95 percent 
more efficiency, but it's really expensive. And actually, um, to contradict myself, these can be somewhat efficient, but for the most part, you can see that it's shooting water in the air. So, so much of this water is getting lost into the air, into gases. So it's actually pretty inefficient, um, but it may be in comparison to flood irrigation, it might be slightly better. Then finally, there's drip irrigation, which is the most efficient form um, because you're just bringing the water out in a slow drip. And this is what I use in my garden. It's over 95% efficient, especially if you mulch the ground with um, wood chips. Uh, it reduces the weed growth because it only, keep, it only wets the soil where the plant you're growing is. Um, and it's really good for perennials, so like trees and plants that grow back every year. But the problem is it costs a lot of money and you can't plow, you can't do this at a, a huge scale. You can do it at a pretty big scale on like a vegetable farm, but not at the kind of scale that most industrial large scale farms are working at. It's more for gardening. All right, so remember salinization is when there's too much salt left behind through because of evaporation or salt water coming into the water. So sometimes in like coastal areas, the salt water will be moving into the um, waterway. Um, slowly, it will be seeping in. Um, and this is toxic for plant growth. But you can see here, um, what happens is the um, plants are sucking water from the soil and when you're aggregating um, or irrigating at a large scale um, when that water is in the soil constantly and evaporates it leaves behind salts even fresh water okay um, it's not just it's not like they're using ocean water on their fields but even our uh, fresh water has salts and minerals in it that will kill the soil okay so um, The solution is drip irrigation prevents this because it's such a slow, it's using the water only that's needed. Um, aerating the soil, so taking plugs and, and pulling out pieces of the soil and flushing with fresh water. Um, those are all the solutions to um, solve that problem. And you can see here's a diagram you can um, pause and look at more closely to understand. All right, so we talked about water logging, but just again, um, this is when the soil saturated with water and it doesn't allow air in the roots so it can stunt or grow or kill crops. So the solution is the same, drip irrigation or soil aeration. And that, if you add compost or manure or um, leaves, that will help with the drainage of the water as well. And so a few more things. Um, like I said, 70% of all the water is used for agricultural use. Um, and then the other, the other parts are municipal or industrial, so like households, power plants. Um, and what we see is that almost all of that water is for animal farming and animal agriculture. So take a second and read this diagram just to get an idea of um, what a major water use is. Um, water consumer the animal farming industry is so most of all of humanity's water use is animal farming and finally this is how aquifers and groundwater works so groundwater um, is when h2o is stored in pore space of permeable rock and sediment layers and aquifers are usable groundwater deposits for humans <clears throat> so um they're replenished by groundwater recharging, so water going through the soil and into the aquifer, but it takes a long time. So you can look at these two diagrams to get a better idea. And confined aquifers recharge our uh, long-term water deposits that are recharged more slowly. Okay, all right, answer the questions and I will see you at the next video.